It's amazing the apps you can sideload nowadays. I've got Shrink App. Uh, apparently has ties to Russia, but we are going to try it out. We're going to shrink this chronograph down. I'm going to be able to fit it in my pocket. Here goes. Ah! Oh, I made it huge. Oh, no. I should have paid two bucks and got the pro version. Travis! Where is he? Travis! Travis! <laughs> Ah. See at the range again? Where is Oh, mosquito. Ah! Got it. This is cool. Welcome back to another Under Pressure. Today we are looking at something that a lot of you are very excited about, and for good reason. This is the FX Pocket Chronograph. Now you have to look carefully here. It's not this, it's not this, it's this little tiny guy right there. This is a chronograph that runs on radar, so it's not light dependent. So you can shoot it in the middle of the day, you can shoot it in the middle of the night, you can shoot it in a rainstorm, it doesn't matter. It's small enough that you can throw it in your pocket, in your backpack, or even in your gun case to carry it with you wherever you go. Now, for those of you who have been in the air gunning world, or the firearms world for that matter, for a while, you know how important a chronograph is. If you're new to this, then maybe you don't know, and I'm going to tell you right now why you need to get a chronograph. Well, what is a chronograph to begin with? Basically, it's something that tells you how fast your projectile is going. Now, this is important for a lot of different reasons. You can use it as a diagnostic tool. All of a sudden, your gun isn't shooting well, uh, you know, the point of impact is all over the place. Uh, well, the first thing you do is run it over the chronograph. And if your velocities are still consistent from where they were before, and if it's not jumping all over the place, then that's automatically taken off the board a lot of different potential problems. You know, you know your regulator's fine, you know, the gun, you know, probably your O-rings o -rings inside the gun are fine, and now you can look at external things like the barrel, the shroud, the, you know, if you've got a moderator on it, that sort of thing. So it makes it so much easier to diagnose problems. One of the most important reasons, though, for having a chronograph is for tuning your air gun. Now, everybody's conditions are different. You'll be shooting at different pellets. You'll be shooting at different elevations. Uh, you know, you'll have the settings on your gun. Every, every gun's going to come a little different. And a chronograph lets you dial it in and uh, get repeatable results and get, you know, the accuracy that you want. You know, we pretty much know certain pellets are going to shoot best in, in different uh, velocity ranges, and a chronograph just lets you dial it right in there. It also helps you uh, get the most consistency out of your air gun, meaning you can shrink the spread between the minimum and the maximum velocity of your shots. Uh, it's just absolutely fundamental. You, you know, if you're just going out in your backyard and knocking down some tin cans or, or knocking down the occasional starling, you know, you, you can get away without using a chronograph for quite a while. But as soon as you decide to get serious, as soon as you get, you know, an air gun or, you know, two or three, you, you just need a chronograph. There's just no way around it. You've got to bite the bu bullet and, and get one. Now, what we've been limited to in the past are traditional chronographs uh, like this one. Now, the way a chronograph like this works is you have uh, two screens, basically. You have, you have a, a screen in here and a screen in here. You have light that shines into each one of those off of these panels here. Uh, or you can use sunlight if you're using a different sort of chronograph. And uh, as the projectile passes through this one, it, it registers here. And then as it passes through this one, it registers there. It tells the, you know, the distance between them, how fast it travels that distance, and it figures out how fast the pellet's going. Now, for this to work, the, the screens have to be set up, you know, a decent space apart. The farther apart, the better. That means that it's longer and uh, bigger and heavier and less portable. I mean, I, I picked this one up, and all of a sudden, you can see, you know, the legs start coming out. It's just not portable at all. Now, that's fine if you have an indoor range or, uh, 
you know, or something like that, where you don't need to carry this around. But the vast majority of us are going to be doing our tuning outside, you know, at our shooting range or, you know, in the backyard or, you know, wherever we go to shoot. And that's why something like this is so important. I know, uh, you know, I've just been you know, so frustrated so many times, oh, I've got to carry my chronograph, I've got to take it apart, I've got to bundle it together, I've got to put it back together wherever we go. And uh, with this, this does everything that this does right here, but in a fraction of the size. It just runs on, you know, three AAA batteries, easy to replace, easy to keep going, and it's just so stinking convenient. Now there are other uh, radar chronographs on the market. The lab radar is, 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 is the most well-known. This one was developed when Frederick Axelson, you know, the owner of, and uh, genius behind FX air guns, uh, saw a similar unit that was being used uh, for airsoft and, uh, and, and paintball, and that sort of thing. It had a max reading of about 500 feet per second. Um, but he contacted you know, the, 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 the person who was building them and they worked together and they redesigned all the internals and they've got it up so now you have a chronograph that will read up to about 1300 feet per second. So this will cover anything from your very slowest projectiles like, like a Nerf gun or really slow paintball guns, you know, all the way up to a, you know, a, I mean a rimfire. You know, most of your rimfire, rimfires will work with this. So uh, the chronograph here pairs with an app. Everything, all of the intelligence of the, of the thing is on the app. And I've heard people complain about this, but that, to me that just seems so silly. I mean, you almost always have your phone with you to begin with. And your phone has far more computing power and far more potential than anything you could put inside of the chronograph. And so for me, uh, that's, that's a, a wonderful way to go. And because uh, the brains of this thing is an app, it can be continually updated. And in fact, you know, we've got an update coming soon and there will be further updates. You know, uh, you know, we probably will be able to get different voice readings, which is something I'm excited about. I'm kind of pushing for either Giles of the Ergon Gear Show's voice or that of uh, Gal Gadot. Uh, you know, either one of those two, those will be my top picks. You guys can vote uh, for your top voices in the comments below and FX will see those and, and take those into account. But make sure you vote for one of those two, please. Uh, the other thing is, is that the functionality is, uh, you, know, you know, the things that the app can do and record and everything else is, is really unlimited uh, by any technological constraints because, uh, because it resides on a smartphone. Now something that this doesn't do that a lab radar, for example, does do is calculate, uh, you know, your ballistic coefficient. A lab radar has the capability to track that pellet, you know, well down range, you know, up to 100 yards or, or, or more, and, uh, and give you the ballistic coefficient along that. This one measures it at a certain point, and so you don't get that. But otherwise, I mean, it gives you, you know, I mean, it gives you everything that a chronograph does, but in an incredibly small, compact form here. Okay, now before I open up the app, I'm going to get the chronograph positioned correctly in front of the gun, and this is where it goes. Now this, you might have to move it a little forward, a little bit backwards, but, but for virtually every gun that we tested, uh, this position worked fine, except for the Texan. And the Texan gives you so much, uh, you know, muzzle blast that we had to raise, you know, we had to drop the chronograph down a little bit and move it about there, and then it read it just fine. But for most situations, you know, it's, it's going to work the best, just sitting right under, you know, right behind the muzzle like that. So now that I've got the chronograph positioned correctly, we'll open up the app here. I've gone to the app store, searched FX radar, and installed it on my phone. Now it gives us a quick start guide, you know, how to, uh, you know, turn on, you know, get the Bluetooth connected, which is very simple. Uh, you know, it, it automatically will pair with your phone if the Bluetooth's on. And, uh, you know, you put in your three AAA batteries here. That's basically what we're seeing. So we hit next. Barrel placement, we've done that just right there. Um, the other thing is, too, is that you want it more or less in line here, right? You don't want your gun, you know, tilted like this or like this. You want it fairly level and, uh, to get the most accurate reading. Now we've got these warnings. Don't shoot yourself. Don't shoot somebody else. Don't shoot the chronograph. Don't shoot anything you don't want to. 
uh, or shouldn't, uh, we'll better say that, and uh, we hit agree to do all that sort of thing. We'll register later, and now we've got these different options that are just standard profiles, um, but we're going to create our own. So let's go to add profile. Now this brings it up, we're going to go to settings here. We'll type in what gun this is, whoops, it's a crown. And now we have our velocity ranges. So you can see that the default is set on six, which is for a high power air gun. But we could go all the way down to one for a Nerf gun or a low power paintball marker you know, number two, or for bows and airsoft guns, number three. We've got a CO2 air pistol. Number four is our regular sort of PCP pistol. Number five is like for like a 12 foot pound air rifle for you uh, UK folks. And then of course, number six is for your high powered air rifle. I can set in my in the scope height and select uh, the type of reticle I'm using. I do want to go through, I do want to go and put in uh, the, the weight of the pellet. We'll be using, you know, the JSB heavies and uh, now we can select our Diablo pellet. We can, we can select slug, pointed, hollow point, target hunting. Again, this is for you to keep track of. This is your profile so you know what you're shooting here. So select as much or as little as you want uh, to keep track of here. Now we can go to the units that we want it to read out in. You know, the default here is feet per second, which is what, you know, most of us will be using, you know, 90% of the time. We can also read out in kilo kilometers per hour. We can do an energy readout in joules. We can do miles per hour. We can do meters per second or our other energy reading in foot pounds. But I'm going to put it back to feet per second here. Now, our advanced settings down here below are the minimum radar return. So how much of a return do you need for it to give you a reading? So our lowest is going to be the most sensitive. Uh, you know, it, it takes the lowest, the, the littlest bit of return uh, to give you a reading, but you're going to get a lot of false readings that way, or at least more false readings. So you, you know, you can move it up to 10%, 20%, all the way up to the highest, which will take, um, you know, quite a bit more of a return to give you a, a reading there. But the default's on 20%, and that worked just fine for everything that we tested here. So we've got our profile set up and we can go back. So I have my chronograph on here. I hit connect and now I'm ready to start shooting. And if you want to get the family involved, it'll even work with a Nerf gun. I can see the cam. Hit another one down. Now can over. Yeah, knocking all the cans over. And it'll work with an arrow shooter like the FX Ranchero Arrow. <coughs> and it'll work for a crossbow, even a tiny little crossbow like this one. <coughs> now for CO2 pistols, it says to put it on setting three. And then it'll work with a with a BB pistol like the Beretta M9A3. Hmm. It'll work with a pellet pistol like the SIG M17. On setting level four, it'll work with my Beeman R7. <laughs> setting level five is for UK spec air guns like this nice little air arms. <laughs> Put it on level six to shoot high power air guns like this FX Streamline. or the Air Force Texan. So as you can see, it works flawlessly with just anything we could throw at it here. Uh, so let's sum up the things I like, the things I don't like. So what do I like about it? I like the size 
I mean, that is just huge. I mean, I'm going to carry one of these with me whenever I go shooting. Even if I'm not planning on tuning, then it's nice to have one because all of a sudden your gun's not shooting right. Uh, you can easily start diagnosing it, you know, with the chronograph here. I mean, it fits in your backpack, in your pocket, in your, in your rifle case. Uh, there's no reason not to carry it with you. I like that the voice, you know, reads out to you so you don't even have to be looking at your phone. I like it even better when it's Giles reading out to me. Uh, you know, if Giles is reading out, it would be nice that, you know, when you see the velocity start dropping off, that he starts uh, insulting you and telling you, uh, you know, you little twit, you need to refill your air tank, that sort of thing. Uh, the fact that it runs off of an app that can be continually updated and get all the functionality that you want, you know, I love that. Are there things I don't like about it? I mean, I'm a little hesitant to go into the things I don't like because they're all based on, on the app, which I know is getting updated you know, very quickly, and maybe by the time you see this video, the, all of the th these things will be addressed. Um, I mean, the app works, works really well. It's got a clean interface, but uh, there are some things I don't like about it. It doesn't uh, save things on the app. So you've got to shoot uh, your, your, uh, you know, your string and then send it to yourself in an email or copy it into a note or something like that, uh, you know, which isn't, a pro which isn't a really big issue. But any time you leave the app, those those things are gone. So even when you copy it and then take it into something else, you go back, it's, it's not there. Again, you know, just so you guys know what's up uh, when you get it, but again, I'm not worried about that at all because all of these things are going to be addressed in, in future, you know, firmware updates, which are, like I say, on the way. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, it saving things on the app. I'm looking forward to it giving me more calculations of extreme spread and uh, you know, all that, all that standard deviation, all that sort of thing that, that we like to see. But again, by the time you see this video, it, it will probably have those things. Uh, you know, there's very little else uh, to complain about here. I mean, the thing itself works perfectly. Uh, the app is convenient and is, uh, you know, because it's a living, breathing, well, maybe not breathing, but it's a living app that, that will be changed all the time. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm really excited about that. So if you're going to be buying a chronograph, for my money, this is definitely the one to get. You'll use it 10 times more than you'll use any other chronograph just because it's so convenient and it works so well. And if you're not planning on getting a chronograph, come on, you, you need a chronograph. So go get a chronograph and I think this is the one to get. So if you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends, and uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh, I didn't do it, Dad. Hey, are you shooting my Alpha Rogue? No, it's mine. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's mm -mm. mine. Come on. At least let me have a turn. Oh, thank you. Okay, buddy, here we go.